This is Balance of Power on Bloomberg Television and Radio. I'm David Weston. Well, it's another day. It's another day without resolution of the debt ceiling standoff between the Republicans and the Democrats, or according to Mitch McConnell, maybe more between the Speaker of the House, Mr. Kevin McCarthy, and the President of the United States, Mr. Joe Biden. To bring us up to speed on how the American people may be looking at all this, we talked a lot to politicians, but what about the American people? We're going to turn now to Frank Luntz. He's pollster and strategic advisor. He's also CEO of FIL, Inc. Frank, great to have you back with us. As I say, we talk about this within the Beltway all the time and how dramatic it is. And by the way, the financial community really cares about the possibility of default. But do the American people, as you go across the country? They don't really understand it. Uh, they know that it's a challenge. They hear both sides. But let's put three elements out to clarify. And this is something that, ver that frustrates me as a pollster. Number one, the public does not prioritize the debt, even the budget. To them, the key element here is to stop wasteful Washington spending. Now, we can argue over how you define that, but the public believes it's not a tax problem, it's a spending problem. Number two, they're agitated that the Democrats are the president for saying he will not negotiate. Isn't that the role of Washington, to come to a conclusion, to, to, to achieve results and solutions? And number three, for the Republicans, they come across as trying to use this as a campaign issue, as a political issue. So basically, David, it's a pox on every house and the feeling that Washington cannot get its act together. They're already mad at D.C. for immigration, the failures there. They're already mad at the failures over energy and the environment. And now they've got a new issue. There's a reason why the public trusts Congress and the White House less than they ever have before. And it's playing out right now on the debt ceiling. I wonder if it's symmetrical, though, in this sense, Frank. We, we think we know who's in charge on the, ultimately on the Democrat side. It's the President of the United States and Joe Biden. What about the Republican side? We now have Mitch McConnell, the minority leader in the Senate, saying, wait a second, I have nothing to do with this. This is between uh, Speaker of the House McCarthy and the President of the United States. Can Speaker of the House McCarthy uh, basically do a deal? Because I've always learned that when you negotiate somebody, you want to negotiate with somebody who can actually do a deal. I don't know whether Kevin McCarthy has the votes. Well, that's process. And the first, the first response to that is, no, he can't. He does not have the votes right now. It's a very good point to raise. But secondly, it's not just an issue of doing a deal. It's what's in the deal itself. If you are paying higher prices for everything, if you are struggling right now, and someone says to you, you're going to have to pay even higher taxes, the public is going to say, absolutely not. Second, that these, you, you're showing photographs of uh, Speaker McCarthy. The public is absolutely on his side when it comes to getting the spending out of Washington under control. The idea that every single year the prices are going up again and again, or the cost, I should say, of, of Washington spending. But third, and this is the challenge for the president, you created this situation over the last two years by all these new commitments, all these new programs, all this new spending. A lot of it was necessary. But the public is saying, wait a minute, if you spent us into this situation, don't you have the responsibility to work with the Republicans to get us out of this situation? And if Wall Street looks at this and says, you know what, I think they're all crazy. I think they're all part of the problem rather than part of the solution. The American people would agree with that. Frank, a long time ago, when I actually practiced some law over in London, the barristers had an expression about condescending to particulars. And I wonder if that's an issue here as well. If you talk in the abstract to Democrats or Republicans, they say, yeah, we got to get spending under control. The problem is, what's spending and who's it going to affect? I mean, the American people may want that done, but are they going to want it when you say, okay, this is specifically the program that's going to affect you, taxpayer, and do you want that cut? It's the whole reason why everyone's afraid to touch Social Security, why they're afraid to touch Medicare. We know that those are the programs that are causing the greatest impact on the budget, on the debt. But I need to, I'm gonna use your London reference. I was over there in October when the entire, when the government collapsed, the prime minister had to resign and pound almost hit parity, which has never happened before because they were playing politics with economic policy. And what happened in Britain can happen right here in America if they're not careful. So yesterday, the president of the United States went to Springfield, Virginia, and he gave a speech that some people took as sort of an early version of what he wants to take into 2024, assuming he's running, which a lot of us do, on the economic front, basically saying those Republicans are going to really run us right into default if we don't watch out. In the meantime, we Democrats have done a lot of good for you. Does that message resonate? 
It resonates. Yes, it does, unless the Republicans effect effectively challenge it. And the way that they challenge it is, are you getting your money's worth from Washington? Are your taxpayer dollars spent as effectively as you would spend it itself? And finally, are we holding Washington accountable? Are we making government more efficient, more effective, and more accountable? The Republican message in a, uh, in a vacuum is stronger than the Democratic message. But Joe Biden will be effective if the Republicans don't respond to that. Well, the Democrats did, uh, at least to me, better than expected in November. Is President Biden getting some of the credit? Where are we right now on right track, wrong track? Uh, something I like to look at are approval ratings. Where is President Biden? Is he starting to get some credit for the things he's claiming credit for? He, is, he, is, he gets credit, but his numbers are almost as bad today as they were on Election Day. And this is what's fascinating for the Republicans. How can you have an economy that's struggling? How can you have a presidency that's damaged? And how can you have basic chaos uh, domestically, locally, globally, and still not pick up that many seats? And the answer, quite frankly, is one, Donald Trump got involved in the election campaign for the Republicans and did a lot of damage for the Senate races. And then you had the issue of abortion, which I'm not going to go into here because this is an economic show, but abortion helped the Democrats turn out their voters. The Republicans have to look at 2024 and ask themselves, what are we going to do differently to actually achieve what we were supposed to achieve in 2022? And the first thing that is, is address the debt ceiling and wasteful Washington spending and show the public that you actually can make government more efficient, more effective, and more accountable. David, if they can do that, they're going to have a great 2024. If they fail at that, the Democrats are going to get reelected. As we go toward this debt ceiling issue, we heard today reports that perhaps some Democrats, or I'm sorry, some Republicans might be interested in extending it to September 30th, which happens to be when the end of the fiscal year is. So you could possibly have a shutdown of the government and a failure to pay our debt at the same time. A really a perfect storm here. I mean, I'm old enough to remember what happened with Newt Gingrich when he said to shut down the government. Is there a risk here for the Republicans that you get blamed for this in 2024? There absolutely is a risk. That's exactly what happened under the Gingrich uh, speakership, where he walked into that with all the cards and the public behind him, and the Republicans left having really suffered a political defeat. My response to your question, I'm trying to think of how to do this where you don't get thrown off the air, I think the phrase or the initials are WTF. <laughs> if we go through that situation in September and we play brinkmanship, I can tell you one thing. The American people are going to say a pox on both your houses. Get it done. Give us results. Give us a solution that allows us not to pay more in taxes. That all they're asking for, by the way, is three cents on the dollar. I'm waiting for a politician on either side, the House or the Senate, to say, you know what? Let's do this. Three cents. We can save three cents on waste, fraud, abuse, mismanagement, even corruption. You do that three cents thing, and that person is going to be a national figure. That person should run for office, because if you can show that we can save three cents on every dollar, on every program, you deserve to be president of the United States. Frank, it's always such a great pleasure, a privilege really to have you on. Thanks for being with us. That's Frank Luntz. He's the famed pollster and strategist.